Hey everyone, this is Matt from 4x4 Ranch and we're here with our Bronco Raptor again. Today we're going to do a under chassis look and this is exciting. I haven't seen this before. This is the first time we've had ours in the air. I haven't seen anybody else talking about this stuff, but there's a lot of chassis differences, a lot of suspension differences that I haven't seen anywhere else. I haven't seen myself and it's really fun to look at. So we're going to do a walkthrough under the vehicle and we're going to look at the suspension and you guys can uh, point out the things in the comments that you see too. So. We'll start out by looking at the bash plates. So you see on the skid plate in the front here, this everybody sees this. As we go down, we've got a very standard skid plate. Now one difference we've got here is this little bump out here. Now I'm going to walk through our first edition a little bit later so you can see what that looks like. But this is open for the diff on the standard Broncos. And on the Raptors, they actually just bumped it out so that it's still covered. So the diff was unprotected on the regular Bronco. It is protected here. It gives us a little less clearance, but definitely important to protect that. The next thing as we come back is this is normally covered right here, but this section is open. And we'll look at that on the first edition also. So we've got another skid plate that's relatively solid that goes back to the, the cross braces that are right on the sides here. What this does is it covers the back of the transmission. We'll see if we can look up in there. This transmission pan, this is plastic. It's open and exposed in most Broncos and it is covered and protected here. So that's really awesome. Now that's not something that a rock is normally gonna hit because it's recessed really good. But let's say you drove over a stick or something and it twists and goes up in there. It's plastic, it's gonna break really easily. So we come back, we've got this skid plate. Um, that's pretty normal. We've got the same, that's the same as what you have on the other Broncos. We've got the skid plate that goes over the gas tank. That's the same. Now this is really cool. They, because of the Raptor having its different exhaust tones, they have the muffler moved instead of being in the back behind the rear axle, they moved it under the chassis. But look at this. On the leading edge of the muffler, they actually put these metal, really solid metal bars to divert. So if you're going to hit a rock, it's going to hit that and it's going to push you over it. You're not going to catch on that square front. So this is a really thoughtful idea to say, hey, if we're going to hit something, we don't want to catch it, rip our exhaust off. We've got this nice plate that's go or these bars that are going to push us down and get us over that. They did the same thing in the back where they've got this low hanging plate or excuse me, this low hanging pipe that uh, they've got a bar that's going to protect that. Now, as we follow the exhaust back, look at this. It looks a lot like an X-pipe. Coming out of the muffler, we've got three output ports on the muffler. You can see there's two controlled ones up there. That's for the different exhaust modes. So depending on which mode you're in, it'll open and close those different exhaust ports on the muffler. But then it comes into this crazy X-pipe that's got a, a fifth, I guess it is, input that goes in there. So we've got three inputs, two outputs that as we follow forward or follow backwards, we go to the exhaust from the backside here and we've just got a couple resonators and then the exhaust stays up really nice and close. So if you're going to be, you know, the likelihood of hitting something there is, is very, very small. Now, something else that we noticed is really cool. And this is something I haven't seen anywhere before talking about is we noticed, of course, the muffler moved from in back of the axle to in front of the axle that gave them more space in front of the axle and so when you look at the receiver hitch the receiver hitch on the raptor has two braces that go back to the cross brace on the frame so there's two arms that are going back bolt there i think this is much of the reason why the bronco raptor has a thousand pound heavier payload capacity for trailers than a regular bronco does so the Bronco, the regular Bronco has up to 3,500 pound capacity. The Bronco Raptor has a 4,500 pound trailer capacity. So I think the big thing is because the, the actual receiver hitches on these are very much just a bumper mount hitch on, on any Bronco, the factory receiver hitch, but because they put these side braces on there, you can see that it really strengthens that and allows you to haul more capacity. Originally, I thought it was a brakes different, maybe a transmission difference, um, but I think actually this is probably the bigger change in that. So now let's look at the suspension stuff a little bit. 
we can see, I think I've seen this before, they have the real cool R on the diff cover. Uh, one thing that's interesting, we'll see this on the other side, but on the, the brake lines, on the Raptors, they actually split the brake lines, because each side, of course, has its own brakes, way up on this cross member, and they run it down each side. So there's a lot of brake hose that hangs down here. On a regular Bronco, as we'll see later, it drops down the center, and then it splits and runs down the axle like you would on you know, most vehicles. I'm not sure why they did that, but it's pretty cool. Another thing, of course, looking at the rear suspension, they've got these massive, insanely cool Fox live valve shocks, which everybody knows about. But one thing I haven't seen a lot of people talking about is look at that, progressive rate springs. You know, regular Broncos do not come with a progressive rate spring. Raptors do. The other thing that's cool is look at that the bump stop. A regular Bronco does not have a bump stop on it. These are some sort of a poly soft rubber uh, bump stop that goes down on the bottom side. It just basically hits on the center of the axle tube, but the, a regular Bronco does not have any bump stop. It uses the shock as the, as the bump stop or the limiter. So another cool feature that they've got in the back. Now something else to look at as we're walking around here, I'll walk around slow so you guys can see stuff. Here we've got our suspension uh, sensor to tell exactly where the suspension is so it knows how to adjust those valves. It knows where you are in compression, how fast it's moving. It's kind of cool. If I don't know if I can see it right, but it actually says Raptor on it. I don't know if that's the same as they use in the trucks. Uh, and then we get to the lower control arms or the, or the uh, trailing arms here. Now oh, this is interesting. They actually use a laddered, much stronger trailing arm on these than they do on a regular Bronco. On the regular Bronco, this is just a tube that goes back. Here we've got a much larger laddered arm. So we'll go down, we'll look. The diff is, is a larger diff than a regular Bronco has. This is a Dana 50 instead of a 44. Let's see if I can get down here so you guys see anything else that you wanna look at as we walk forward. Now here we'll look at the front suspension. This is kind of cool. Again, we have bump stops. The regular Broncos don't have a bump stop. Now, in order to get a bump stop, they were able to, the lower control arm, which is obviously different on these, they actually molded this plate in, or this mounting point for the bump stop here. And then on the frame, they actually have this additional uh, bracket that the bump stop hits against. So that gives us that, that upper limit. But in order to do that, they had to also change the sway bar. So this has got the sway bar, the disconnecting sway bar, but the uh, sway bar arm that comes out to the end link actually has a very large swoop to it that moves it up and out so it goes around that bump stop. So nice, uh, thoughtful feature on being able to get good bump stops in the front of the Bronco. So let's look at this, check out those Amazing Fox shock. Sorry that the Bronco is dirty, but we actually use this. This is not a, a show vehicle. We're actually getting everything ready. It's on the lift because we're getting everything ready to head down to the Bronco Safari. We're uh, putting our beadlock wheels on it right now. Check out our other videos. We'll be talking about that shortly. You can see one interesting thing. These, they've actually got these little hubcaps. These are literally hubcaps. Um, both of the hubcaps were not installed all the way on this Bronco. They were just kind of sitting off cockeyed. We had to tap those in just to make sure that they didn't come off. They seemed like they were very secure, but they weren't installed all the way. So I'll give you some more visibility of what it looks like on the suspension here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go walk over. We got our first edition in the air here. We're gonna walk over and we're gonna compare what we saw before to what we've got on here. So again, the first editions come with the uh, skid plates, so it's got the big skid plate. They're very similar, but like I showed you, look at this skid plate is open and the diff is exposed. And this is actually a slightly smaller diff than the Raptor has, but this is exposed. So um, if you were to hit something, it is possible to damage that. Then we go back here, we've got the short skid plate and then this is wide open where we've got this plastic transmission pan that Unlikely, but very possible to damage. Um, it is easily damaged if something were to hit it because it's only plastic. Going back, we have the same skid plates. Notice where that exhaust was on the Raptor. It's wide open here because they moved the exhaust to the back. So 
Again, showing you what it looks like underneath here. <clears throat> exhaust is on the back side, which prevents, because this exhaust is here, that prevents you from being able to actually tie this back to the frame rail. You could probably make something that kind of went back if you want it more solid, but it uh, makes it much more difficult. As you can see here, look at our exhaust, or our brake lines run down and they split and go across. So uh, they don't run down on the outside like they do with the Raptors. Again, there is no bump stops on here. It's a Sasquatch, so it's got the good Bilstein shocks, but not the super amazing cool Fox shocks. And we'll walk back forward on here. Now we look at, we mentioned before, that these trailing arms, look at, this is a, just a regular tube trailing arm. We can look over at the uh, Raptor, look at those trailing arms, how much cooler they are than what we have here. And let's walk back forward. Now we don't have the wheels off on this one, but you can see how that lower control, again, no point to put, no place to put a uh, bump stop here. This is the sway bar link or the sway bar arm that goes out to the end link. Again, this does not have that swoop that makes room for that bump stop to be there. And then, of course, there's nothing on the frame to mount that, that, that bracket that you'd have the bump stop. And uh, lastly, they ran some wires in the way anyway. So, again, this works really good for daily driving, it works really good for off roading, but if you're going to be bahaing and jumping it, you're definitely going to have a lot of issues. As you see, we got our Brunt Buster braces on this just because we didn't want to break tie rod ends. And uh, uh, according to Brunt Buster, that nobody using these has ever broken a tie rod end. So uh, we feel pretty safe with that. So I thought we'd show this to you. Let's walk back over here. Let you check this out and see. All these cool things, you know, we, you see a lot of people saying, is the extra money for a Bronco Raptor worth it? Well, it totally depends on what you're doing with your Bronco Raptor. But if you plan on jumping, you know, you can't say, hey, the Bronco Raptor, you know, it's got expensive shocks and a, and more, a larger horsepower motor. You know, it's got three liter instead of two seven. That's all you're getting. That's not all you're getting at all. There's a ton of little details on this vehicle that make it better performing for Baja jumping work like that. So, all right, hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more content like this. Don't forget to subscri subscribe and like so more people can see it. Thank you.